Well, welcome to part two in uh, the topic three video lecture for channel hydraulics. And in this part, in this topic, we'll deal with the numerical solutions for the gradually varied flow equations. And there's two approaches. We'll talk about the direct step method and the standard step method. So here's the equation for the direct step method, which gives the change in depth with distance along the channel. And we can re rewrite that um, um, uh, in this form where a dis some distance delta x is equal to some distance some change in depth delta d times the average of 1 minus Froude squared Froude number squared on s naught minus sf squared which is pretty close to um, the change in depth times the average of 1 minus Froude number squared on the average of bed slope minus energy gradient. Now these averages here, they are the averages along the distance delta x. Okay, so the step distance that we are going to calculate, the, um, the, these terms here, the 1 minus Froude number squared and the difference between the bed gradient and the energy gradient, they are the average over that step distance, delta x which we're going to approximate in our analysis. Now let's look at a, 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 an example, a sample problem of a rectangular channel with a discharge of 600 meters cubed. The channel width is 50 meters, Manning's end is 0.04 and the bed slope is 0 0.002. Um, now let's say we know that the depth of the downstream hydraulic control is 6.5 meters. Maybe it's, a, it's overtopping a weir and the height over the weir is, um, is 6.5 meters over the, the elevation of the bed of the channel. We can use Manning's equation with this information to calculate the normal depth which is 4.43 meters. So we have a classic M1 profile, it's a, it's a subcritical flow conditions. Um, as we move upstream the depth will decrease towards the normal depth. And this is the, um, the solution, this is the process for calculating the solution. We start at the, in this first row, we start at the, um, the, the downstream control, which had a depth D of 6.5 metres above the bed. So this is above the bed, not above the crest of the weir. The cross-sectional area at that point is 325 metres squared. We can calculate that from the known width and the known depth. The width perimeter is 63 metres, based on it being a rectangular channel. And knowing the discharge, we can calculate Froude number to be um, 2.2312. Now forget about the means for a minute. We can also calculate the energy gradient. How do we do that? How do we calculate the energy gradient from this information? Well, we use the, um, the flow resistance equation, the Manning equation in this case. And we can rearrange the Manning equation to give the energy gradient as a function of discharge, wetted perimeter, cross-sectional area, and Manning's roughness coefficient. So from that equation, we can calculate the energy gradient here. Um, and this is starting at the downstream end of the profile, which we say is distance zero, zero meters. Now this is the direct step method. So we're calculating how far upstream for a given change in water depth. And in this case, we're gonna say the given change in water depth is 0.2 meters. So at a distance upstream, remember the depth is decreasing upstream as we approach normal depth, which we calculated to be 4.43 meters. So at, at that, the, 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 um, the fixed distant depth change of 0.2 meters that we're interested in gives us a depth of 6.3 meters at the, at the next step upstream. We can then calculate cross-sectional area, wetted perimeter, Froude number in exactly the same way we can then calculate, this is remember we need the 1 minus Froude number squared, the average over our section. We can calculate that, that's 0.9439. Um, and we can calculate the energy gradient uh, using Manning's equation at this um, step upstream. So we can get the mean value of S0 minus SF, remember we need that up in here. Um, and we can calculate X now using our equation. We know what the uh, change in depth is, it's 0.2. We know what the mean um, one, of my, 1 minus Froude number squared is, that's 0.9439. We know what the mean of S0 minus SF is, that's 0 0.0014. Um, and so we can calculate delta X, which turns out to be um, 139.1 meters. So that's the distance upstream to get 
a water depth of 6.3 meters. And we can then repeat that over and over again to see how far upstream we have to step each time to get this fixed um, reduction in water depth of 0.2 meters. So the next one would be 6.1 meters. We can work through all this and we can see that the distance upstream is 284.4 meters. The best way for you to get um, your head around this procedure is basically to work through it yourself. It's actually quite straightforward. It's basically, it's, it's, it's all really expressed in this equation here. Um, you just need to work systematically through the application of that equation to a series of steps of unknown distance, but, uh, but known uh, um, height difference, depth differences upstream. And from that, we could plot the backwater profile from these coordinates, the depth coordinate and the distance coordinate. Now let's look at the standard step method using a regular cha a channel, which is based on the specific uh, energy gradient. And here's the equation here. And in this approach, we're calculating the change in depth for a given step distance upstream. We can rewrite this um, in this form where we have a, 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 dis a, a change in the specific energy, delta E equals some distance delta X times the average of the bed gradient minus the edge energy gradient. And as with the, um, the previous um, numerical solution, this average is the average over the distance delta x. So it's S0 minus F averaged over that distance delta x. And we estimate that based on the average of the values at either end of the step. So we can work through the same example now using for this particular using this particular method. So again, we have exactly the same situation, a rectangular channel, um, 600 meters cubed per second, channel width of 50 meters. The height over the downstream control is 6.5 meters, it's the height above the bed, and we've got an M1 profile. So here's now the solution using the standard step method. Here, you know, we don't have this sort of fixed change in water depth. We have a um, a fixed change in, um, in distance. We're going to say we're going to calculate this change in depth over a distance of 150 meters. So the first step is 150 meters, the next step the same distance to give us a distance of 300 meters um, upstream of our hydraulic control. So we work through it from here for a, um, a we, can, for, we know the depth over at the hydraulic control is 6.5 meters so we can calculate the specific energy we can calculate the energy gradient using Manning's, Manning's equation again. Um, sorry about that. Uh, and then um, we can um, we calculate the specific energy, which we, we've got here, 6.674. Um, and um, we now, this is the tricky bit, okay? We don't know what the depth is at this distance, 150 meters upstream. We have to take a guess. And our first guess won't be right. We'll guess something too high or too low and then we 6.28 is actually the correct guess but we don't know that in advance so we guess something we calculate the area we calculate the weather perimeter we calculate the specific um, energy um, and the energy gradient in the same way we can then calculate the mean of s0 minus sf we can calculate the change um, in um, specific energy uh, using this equation here we know delta x is 150 We've calculated the mean of S0 minus SF, so we can get delta E. Um, and we can then see if the change in specific energy, uh, which we've calculated 6.674 minus 6.471, equals our delta E from this equation. Uh, it almost certainly won't be the first time, so we then have to change our guess of depth. And we keep um, iterating our, our guess of depth until we get um, the delta E actually equals the, um, the difference in specific energy. So we're trying to adjust the depth until we get an energy balance um, in, our, in our reach. So the, the specific energy at the bottom end of the reach and minus the specific energy at the top end of the reach equals the energy gradient times the distance over the reach. And that's essentially how that works. Again, the best way for you to get familiar with this and be comfortable with it is just to work through it slowly yourself. It's quite logical. You just need this equation here where the specific energy is a function of distance times the mean of the um, difference between bed gradient and energy gradient.
Right, the final um, method is the standard step method, so it's exactly the same method but for an irregular channel. Now I'm not going to work through this one because it's almost exactly the same as the, um, as the previous for the regular channel and in, in reality we, you wouldn't ever be asked you wouldn't be asked to do this using a, a sort of a manual calculation. You'd use a piece of software like, like HECRAS to, to actually perform the iterations to get the right um, uh, uh, water level um, for a given um, change in, in, in distance. Um, and now for the irregular channel though, we use um, the full um, energy term and we tend to use stage rather than water depth. We can re rewrite that um, expression, the expression um, in this form where we get the, the change in total head equals some distance times uh, the energy gradient. Um, now as I said, I'm not going to work through um, this with you. Again, the energy gradient is the average energy gradient over the reach, so it's actually calculated from the energy gradient at the top stream end and the bottom stream end of your step. You have a fixed step distance, you set the, the cross-section distance, cross-section spacing in, in your model, you calculate the energy gradient at the bottom end and the top end based on a guess of what the world level is at the top end, and you adjust the world level at the top end until the average of the energy gradient um, times the distance equals the change in total energy ahead over that reach. Again, uh, work through it yourself and think about it. It's the best way to get your head uh, around uh, what, what that actually means in practice. Okay, so that's the end of uh, this video. In fact, we only have one video for this topic, so you can uh, listen to it a couple of times if, if it wasn't clear um, and, uh, and go through some of the examples in your textbooks. There's actually a lot of other videos available online um, which apply um, the direct step and the standard step method um, a little bit more slowly and go through each individual calculation. If you'd like to uh, follow those procedures, just uh, Google standard step method or direct step method and I'm sure you'll find them. Well, that's the end of topic three and it's also the end of the first module on channel hydraulics. Um, I hope uh, these video lectures have been useful and look forward to uh, working further with you in Module 2 on Natural Channels. Thank you.